Hello and welcome to Body of Christ Ministries. We're not a denomination. We're the Body of Christ. I'm Brother Glover and I want to thank you and welcome you to part three of the series I began not too long ago entitled The 21 Judgments. And this will be part one of the trumpet judgments. Um, before we go further, let me have a word of prayer and then we'll dive right on into this. Our Father in heaven, most holy and precious high God, I just give honor and glory and praise to you. I dare not take any of the glory, but thank you for the revelation you've given me and the unveiling of mysteries and hidden truths in my times of study, Lord. Now, I pray that you will give us ears to hear and hearts to obey and to that we be prompted to pray regarding the things that are to come upon this earth, Lord, that our lost loved ones will receive their salvation by believing in their hearts and confessing with their mouths the Lord Jesus and accepting him as their Lord and Savior. And Lord, I just pray that this message will be a blessing to every ear and eye who views this video in the future. In Jesus' name I pray and thank you, Lord. Amen. All right. Um, let's... Let me give you a brief summary before I dive into this um, part one of this message on the on the trumpets. I should have said this at the beginning of my teaching on the seven seals, but in chapter seven of Revelation, um, this is a vision in verses one through eight that John had, um, where these things happened before any of the judgments begin when the 144,000 of the tribes of Israel are sealed. And then in verses 9 through 15 is a vision that occurs after the tribulation. Um, but you can go back and listen to parts one and two of the seven seals and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, I can't prove this, but once the Jews and Gentile saints are saved through the ministry of the 144,000 sealed tribes of Israel and the two witnesses and then slain, unfortunately, it seems to be that um, the remainder of the judgments of the trumpets and vials affect the centers of the earth, or centers on the earth. Now, according to Joel in the Old Testament, and then Jesus in the New Testament, the second witness, in three different gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, let's keep in mind that cosmic disturbances were prophesied by both Joel and Jesus. The first four trumpets appear to be caused by means of cosmic events. At the end of the fourth trumpet, three woes are declared to happen beginning with the fifth trumpet. The fifth trumpet deals with strictly tormenting ungodly men for five months, while the sixth trumpet allows a threefold plague to kill a third of mankind. We're going to get into that. Uh, this is the second woe. And finally, the seventh trumpet, as the sixth seal, occurs after the Great Tribulation and seems to indicate the establishment of the millennial reign of Christ. So let's dive on into this. Okay. Once again, this is part three to the 21 Judgments, the Seven Trumpets, part one. And I want to say this real quick in case I forget to mention this at the end. If this message is a blessing to you, I just want to ask you if you haven't already to please subscribe and check out other video teachings we have. I primarily deal with Bible prophecy and end times events, um, and of course other teachings as, as the Holy Spirit leads. And I welcome positive comments, you know, leave positive comments, um, questions, if you have any questions or if there's something that you um, wonder or cross your mind, um, message me and, and um, ask your question and, and, and I'll seek God for an answer. And if, I, if he doesn't reveal it to me, I'll just have to humbly say, hey, you know what? I don't know, but hopefully God will reveal it to us in due time. And also, most definitely, prayer requests are always welcome. Amen. All right. I just want to point out a few clarifications before I begin with the first trumpet in Revelation chapter 8. So if you have a Bible or an app on your phone or, or iPad, uh, you can go ahead and go to the book of Revelation chapter 8. Now, just for clarification, these trumpet judgments are not to be mistaken for the last trump in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 that Paul talks about or in 1 Corinthians 15, 52 regarding the catching away of the church. You know, when the dead in, life, dead in Christ shall be raised and then the, those who remain shall be called up together to meet Jesus in the air. This is not what this is referring to. These trumpet judgments are also not to be confused with the fall feast of trumpets 
also known as Rosh Hashanah, which occurs around early September, depending on how the Jewish calendar falls. And the uh, um, seven feasts, four in the spring and three in the fall, can be found in Leviticus chapter 23. And when it says feast, it's not talking about like you go to a family reunion and pig out or anything. This is just strictly talking about appointed times. These are appointed times of God, and they're not the feasts of Israel. They're the feasts of God. So this is something that goes on continually forever and ever. All right, these trumpet judgments occur strictly during the tribulation period before Christ's return to earth. Some of the visions were written out of sequence, and you'll see what I mean when I get to these um, judgments. Now, I'm going to do something that I've never done before. In case some of you may wonder, okay, well, what books or references you study from? Well, I'm going to share some of my study sources with you. All right, um, I use the Nelson's Commentary, and then I also use one called the Nelson's KJV, that's King James Version Bible Commentary. Several study Bibles, the King James Version, the NASB, and the New Living Translation. Uh, Revelation Expounded by Finnis Dake, and a number of Google searches. And um, I'll try to give you some references as I go over some of these points, unless it's a revelation that the Holy Spirit has given to me. Now, I just want you to keep in mind out, I want you to notice the amount of meteorites or asteroids falling to the earth and it's affecting the waters and the earth and other events having to do with the sea. And you'll see what I mean when I get into this. So if you would, without further ado, let's look at Revelation chapter 8 verse 7 dealing with the first trumpet. And some of these I may compare with the plagues of Egypt, some of these. All right, verse 7 reads, the first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth and a third part of trees was burnt up and all green grass was burnt up now this is compared to um, the seventh plague in Exodus chapter 9 verses 22 through 25 in the seventh plague fire mingled with hail rained on the land of Egypt another thing to note is that due to destruction of vegetation famines will become even more extreme as will these fires automatically cause extreme droughts so we know when we talked about the seals you know there were famines that was a big thing as part of the judgment so this is going to get even more intense or extreme all right now just kind of a little speculation that can't be proven but just want to share a few possibilities with you um, as to how this hail and fire mingled with blood could exist now, you know, everything doesn't have to have an explanation, but just want to give you some possibilities. One possibility could be a meteorite passing through the Earth's atmosphere, leaving red colored dust particles. Now, this hail is not water, but fire and red hot stones falling to the Earth. And that's what it means by fire mingled with hail raining upon the Earth. Okay, or fire mingled with blood, excuse me. Hail and fire mingled with blood. We stick with the right wording of the text. All right, now, even worse, a solar flare blast from the sun could occur where solar flares crystallize upon hitting the Earth's atmosphere, forming hot blood colored hail. Hot blood colored hail. And if you want to hear more details about this, um, I talked about it in part two of a message I did, a video I did called Prophetic Warnings Part Two. So if you've already subscribed to the channel or if you want to look on my page and scroll down some, you'll see prophetic warnings God gave me in the fourth watch of night. And then beside that, either below or above it, it'll be prophetic warnings part two. And I went into extensive details. All right, let's go through these kind of fast because when I get to the fifth trumpet, I want to spend some time on it um, in a reasonable amount of time. All right, the second trumpet recorded in verses eight and nine reads, and the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain, burning with fire, was cast into the sea, and a third part of the sea became blood. And a third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and a third part of the ships were destroyed. Okay, now, again, you know, like I said, none of this has to have an explanation, but just for the sake of doing research and 
just trying to find out how some of these things could possibly occur. Now, I'm not saying that this is how it's going to occur, but just some possibilities of things that have happened in the past. Now, it said in verse 8, as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. Now, could this be a mountain-sized meteorite hitting the sea? Or could this be a super volcano producing hot lava, which makes the sea become blood? Just some speculation, just some food for thought. And then in verse 9 it says, And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. So in other words, economic commerce over that portion of the sea will be devastated. Now, could this be in the section of the Pacific Ocean surrounded by the Ring of Fire? I asked a question, I believe it was in part two of the seals. Could this be the Ring of Fire? Now, there's a huge portion from the coast of the United States on the West Coast all the way over to the other part of the world. I, I don't have a map in front of me right now, but maybe there will be an illustration put up on the screen and you'll see that the surrounding areas where it is filled with nothing but volcanoes around that edge and it's often called the Ring of Fire. Now, the Pacific Ocean is the largest of the oceans covering around one-third of the Earth's surface. Now, that's not to, not to say that this is one-third. It just says one-third of the Earth's surface. Now, there's other bodies of waters, and um, I looked it up, but I didn't put it down on here. But we just know that the Pacific Ocean is the largest body of ocean water, okay? Now, Finnis Dake said in his book on Revelation Expounded that he feels like maybe it's the Mediterranean Sea, which is bordered by the territory known as the Roman Empire, being that it was possible that will possibly be revived. Now, that leads me to a question here. Could this be the head that's wounded to death and healed again in Revelation 13, verse 3? Just a question to ask, just something to ponder on. Okay, don't want to stay on it too long. Let's move on to the next, on to the third trumpet. And we're still in Revelation chapter 8. Now, let's look at verses 10 and 11. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Now, um, the second and third trumpet dealing with the ocean and dealing with the rivers. And when it says fountains of waters, it's talking about springs. Basically, water that we drink from. Okay, so we know that if anything happens, if there's a biochemical attack or, or somewhat on our springs, we know that the waters become contaminated and, un and undrinkable. All right, now I have a ministry partner and friend of mine who recently did a video on the uh, red tides and parts of the ocean was red. Now, I don't know what caused that or what causes that. And I do apologize. I didn't look that up. I meant to look that up before I recorded this video, but I just felt the burning and urgency to go ahead and put this out because there's some things coming up that I'm going to have to be studying for. And I'll tell you at the end of this video, but Having to do with the, the sea and the waters turning to blood, I thought about the first plague in Exodus chapter 7 verses 19 through 20 when Moses caused the um, waters to be turned to blood and it was undrinkable. See, the thing about it is this is a judgment for the people of the earth where the um, people of God's blood have been shed. So now in return, they'll have blood to drink being that they caused this catastrophe and innocent shedding of innocent blood that has gone on. And you know about how I, how I get off on the shedding of innocent blood, but that's I'm not on that subject today. So now let me give you a few points before I move on to the fourth trumpet. The third trumpet makes a third of all fresh water bitter, resulting in widespread thirst and death. Depending on weather conditions, we know the human body can only go anywhere from three to eight days without water before dying. Now this great star appears to be another meteor, and as we often see on the news from NASA, many of these are so close to hitting the earth, and you know we always talk about how fortunate we are that it missed the earth by so many 
thousands of miles or whatever the case may be, but we know eventually there's going to come a time where these asteroids will not miss the Earth, but they will hit the Earth. All right, now let me touch on wormwood real briefly. Wormwood is a Middle Eastern herb known for its bitterness. The natural herb itself is not poisonous, it's just not pleasant to the taste. But now in this case regarding the meteorite that will be hitting these waters, it will make the spring waters toxic and deadly. So, you know, it says many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. So, like I said, there's going to be a lot of men and, you know, when it says men, you're talking about men, women and children dying of thirst. OK, I think you've got enough on that. Most of these are self-explanatory. It doesn't require a lot of explanation. OK, moving on to the fourth trumpet in Revelation, chapter eight, verses 12 and 13 reads, and the fourth angel sounded. And the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld, and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet, of the three angels which are yet to sound and I just want to reference this with Revelation 12 verse 12 here in just a moment but now before I get off of this a question came to my mind as I was uh, in my studies what's up with this third part of everything you know you've been hearing nothing but a third here a third of that a third of this a third of that okay well according to the Nelson KJV Bible commentary God only touches a third part in order to bring it to repentance before everything is involved. Now, when it said everything, I believe this is talking about the vows or bold judgments, uh, the vows of God's wrath, which is going to be global more so than just a portion of the earth. Now, the seals has already destroyed a fourth of the population and the trumpets is destroying a third. So now this is about half of the population of the earth. So we're up to about if, if we have about a little over 7 billion people right now, we're, we're over at least 3.5, 3.5 billion people that have already died in just the tribulation alone. And I believe we're probably only dealing with probably around the middle of the tribulation by now. It could be anywhere between the middle and the end, but that's a lot of deaths. And see, it kind of irks me when people talk about how the seals have been released and some of the trumpets are being blown right now. Well. You don't have any scriptural evidence that this is occurring yet because you don't have half the population on the earth die. I guarantee you if a billion, if, if even just one billion of the planet have died, trust me, it'll be in, the world would be in chaos. It would be an uproar right now. All right. Finnis Dake in Revelation Expounded stated that this is not the same as what Jesus prophesied in Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 or in the sixth seal regarding the darkening of the sun. He also stated that this darkness will not last very long, being that the sun will be darkened again in the next trumpet judgment. Beginning with the next trumpet, the fifth, we will begin with the first woe and maybe save the second and third woes for part two of the trumpet judgments. All right, now I want you to really, really prepare your hearing and pay attention because it's getting ready to get deep now. Okay, I'm going to read verses, excuse me, I'm going to read, we're going to skip to Revelation chapter 12. Remember I said let's reference Revelation chapter 12 when I talked about the three woes. Okay, I'm going to read to you verses 7 through 9 and then I'm going to skip down and read verse 12. And this is talking about the removal of the devil and the fallen angels from the heavens to the earth. Okay. <clears throat> and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fall against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Okay, so during this battle, this is going to take place in the second heaven realm, in other words, the invisible realm. Now, my scripture references for them is Daniel chapter 10, verse 13, when the angel, or shall I say the prince of Persia, withstood the, the messenger of God that was supposed to, that was sent to Daniel. For 21 days and then in Ephesians 2 verse 2 
refers to Satan as the prince of the power of the air. So this is the invisible realm where this war will take place between Michael and his angels and the devil and his angels. Okay, and it says, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. So in other words, they will no longer have access to the portals of heaven. No longer can Satan go before God and be the accuser of the brethren, as it said in verse 10, for the accuser of our brethren, as it refers to him as. Okay, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and the angels were cast out with him. Okay. Now, verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens. Plural. Talking about the first, second, and third heavens. Okay, the first heaven is the atmosphere where you can see the sun, moon, and stars. You can see the sky. And again, the second heaven realm is the invisible realm where angels and demons war over humanity. And the third heaven is the abode where God dwells. Okay? And ye that dwell in them. So in other words, I believe an angel was saying, was given a command to the people in heaven, in the heaven, in the heavenly realms, to, to rejoice because you don't have to deal with these beings anymore. You don't have to worry about, you know, whatever they're dealing with right now. Having, they're having to put up with Satan and his fallen angels right now. But right when this occurs, after that battle occurs, and I believe this is going to occur somewhere in the middle of the tribulation. Then they can rejoice once they've been cast out and their place is no longer found in the heavens, in the heavenlies. All right, now, the second part of this verse is where we need to really become concerned. It says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Two key words, earth and sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time. All right, now, other words, I believe this is where, and I've preached this before, and I've taught this before, and this is even in my book, that the devil and his fallen angels will be put into physical manifestation where we can see each other, just like you and I can see each other, if we were to see each other in person. Okay, so now, I made this point to bring you to Revelation chapter 9. Now, did you know that the King James Version is not the closest translation to the original Hebrew and Greek text? Well, I found out a long time ago that the NASB, I believe it's New American Standard Bible, is the closest translation to the Hebrew and Greek text of the Bible. And now, let's, gonna, let's move on to the fifth trumpet, and we're going to be talking about the bottomless pit and the plague of locusts, or the plague of the locusts. Okay, in the NASB version, it reads... Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star from heaven which had fallen to the earth. Now let me make a point here. In the King James Version it says, I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. In the NASB it says, I saw a star from, from heaven which had fallen to the earth. So had fallen is past tense. So he was already on the earth. Okay, so remember, they just got defeated in this battle, so now they're in physical manifestation on the earth and in the sea. Okay, so this star from heaven was probably more than likely a prince spirit which had fallen to the earth, and the key of the bottomless pit was given to him. And I'm going to explain to you what the bottomless pit is in just a moment. He opened the bottomless pit, smoke went up out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke came locusts upon the earth, and power was given to them, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were, not, they were told not to hurt the grass of the earth, nor any green thing, nor any tree, but only the men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Now the King James says, in their foreheads, and, but this right here says, on their foreheads. And I'm going to probably talk about that in part two of this message on the trumpets. Because I want to go into more details on why, you know, I'm differentiating these different translations. Okay. And they were permitted, excuse me, and they were not permitted to kill anyone, but to torment for five months. 
and their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings a man. And in those days men will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die and death flees from them. So in other words, the spirit of death will not be able to take them out of here. So they won't even be able to commit suicide, all right? The appearance of the locusts were like horses prepared for battle, and on their heads appeared to be crowns like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like the hair of women, and their teeth were like the teeth of lions. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots, of many horses rushing to battle. They have tails like scorpions and stings, and in their tails is their power to hurt men for five months. They have as, their, has, they have as king over them the angel of the abyss. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in the Greek he has the name Apollyon. The first woe is past. Behold, two woes are still coming after these things. All right, now, these demonic locusts will cause physical harm to men. So now that these demons are in physical manifestation, they're going to be able, you'll notice from here out, you'll see, even in the sixth seal, these people, these demons are going to be in physical manifestation. Now, let's talk about the bottomless pit and let's talk about the abyss. Now, this angel which had fallen to the earth was a fallen angel. And I believe this by revelation of the Holy Ghost. I don't believe it was an angel from God or an angel of God. I believe this was a fallen angel because it says which had fallen to the earth. Okay, now why would one of God's angels fall to the earth? Okay, think about it now. And like I said, this is by revelation of the Holy Spirit. Now, when we say the bottomless pit, I saw, I recently saw a video. I was watching a video at work uh, the other night. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I believe the man, if I can remember his name, was Michael Pearl. He did a teaching, he did a illustrated chart where he drew like the earth and then he went down to the core of the earth. And um, let me say this real quick. Um, from, uh, from an article I got from the National Geographic, the earth's interior is composed of four layers, three solid and one liquid. Not magma, but molten metal, nearly as hot as the surface of the sun. The deepest layer is a solid iron ball, about 1,500 miles in diameter. That's pretty huge right there. So at the core of the earth is this big ball, this big solid iron ball, and it just said it's, it's nearly as hot as the surface of the sun. Okay, that's the bottomless pit. Now when I saw this illustration that, that um, Pastor Michael Pearl drew on there, he said this is the bottomless pit and the reason it's called the bottomless pit is because there's a gate that goes into it and then to the bottom of it there's a gate that goes out so it goes all the way through but once you get locked in that bottomless pit then there's no escape now Jesus talked about the gates of hell okay so there's an entryway into the bottomless pit and there's also an exit so there's gates multiple times okay so we don't know how many gates there are but we know that there's more than one being that Jesus said gates of hell. Okay, so this fallen angel had a key to the bottomless pit. So in other words, he had the, the authority to open this gate of hell and these locusts came out. It said that smoke of a great furnace came out. Smoke went up out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. The sun and the air were darkened by the smoke of the pit. And then it talked about the locusts that came up, came up out of the smoke, came locusts upon the earth. Now these are demons, basically, okay? And they were given the assignment to torment men, not kill them, but torment them. Okay, now, skipping back down to verse 11, it says, They have as king over them. Now, I believe this is a different angel. It says, The angel of the abyss. Okay, so now he's over these locusts and I believe he's the one that gave them the charge because he has a mandate from God that they can only do what God allowed them to do now the agenda of Satan and the fallen angels is to steal kill and destroy so now Abaddon in Hebrew and Apollyon in Greek both mean have the same definition destruction okay so now a lot of theologians and 
scholars speculate or they, they, they don't know whether this is Satan or whether this is just a fallen angel. Well, let me give you the answer here. This is not Satan. I believe this is one of his generals or Prince Spirits to say, because in Revelation 2, uh, it says when it's talking about the church at Pergamos, it said that that's where his seat is. His seat is in the atmosphere of Pergamos. OK, that's the seat of Satan. Now, this one is the angel of the abyss, which is king over the locusts. Now, we keep seeing this word abyss. Now, anytime you deal with abyss, this is talking about the deep. OK, the abyss is the sea. So now when we're talking about the floor of the ocean. We're talking about trenches. OK, now in Genesis chapter one, verses one and two, the spirit of God hovered over the deep. OK, now that's that's for another study. But now I just did a little Google search here and I can't tell you the site that I went to. But let me give you a summary of the ocean's five layers and then I'm going to go ahead and come to a close. Now, epipelagic zone, we have the first level or the first layer, which is the upper part of the ocean. OK, it's called the epipelagic, epipelagic zone, which is known as the sunlight zone. Then the second layer is the meso, mesopelagic zone known as the twilight zone. Then we have the third layer of the ocean, with this, which is bathopelagic zone, known as the midnight zone. So it gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And then the fourth layer of the ocean is the abyssal pelagic zone, simply known as the abyss. Okay, and then we have the fifth layer, which is the deepest layer of the ocean, known as hadal pelagic zone. And this means the trenches. The Hadal Pelagic Zone is also called the trenches and is found from the ocean basin and below. So in other words, this is the lowest parts of the ocean and even beneath the ocean floor. Okay, so now I believe that some of the gates of hell is in the trenches of the ocean floor of the earth. And see, this thing is going to come up out of the water. This is going to be a powerful thing. When the gates of hell, can you imagine the disturbance that's going to be in the sea and the ocean when this smoke comes up out of the pit from the bottomless pit, which is also the lake of fire, which none of the demons or, or anybody have been cast in there yet. But there's layers of the earth, which is the abode of some of the fallen angels that were in chains. You can look at that in the book of Jude. But anyway, I'm just kind of going on and on and on. But listen. I'm going to save part two for the um, sixth and seventh trumpets, and we're going to spend some time and dig deep into that. But I hope that I've said something. I hope I didn't give you too much. But again, if this has been a blessing to you, um, I ask that you please subscribe and check out other videos. If you haven't listened to the seals parts one and two, I just urge you to listen to it. And, and again, I encourage you to leave positive comments, questions and prayer requests. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this wonderful teaching. Thank you for using me and giving me utterance. And I just pray, Lord, that if somebody has not gotten saved, that they will strongly consider accepting your son Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, simply by believing in their hearts and confessing with their mouths the Lord Jesus and that he, is, he was raised from the dead. And if they've simply done that, then they are welcome. They've been adopted into the family of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.